Hi Bo Bakers, I love all the comments that you've been leaving under my videos. I've been getting a lot of questions about how to work with meringue correctly. So this week's big and bold recipe is for raspberry pistachio meringues and I'm going to answer all of your questions. So let's get baking. This recipe was inspired by London's famous Otto Lenghi restaurant where their meringues take pride of place in the window. Let's start with the raspberry puree. Heat the raspberries in a pot and simmer until the volume has reduced down by around a half. Pass the raspberries through a sieve to remove the seeds and what you're left with is a beautiful thick puree full of flavour. First things first for our meringue, we're going to heat our sugar in the oven. By heating your sugar it helps to stabilise the meringue and makes your mix much glossier and stiffer. Your sugar is ready when you can see around the edges the sugar has started to melt. We're just going to set it aside and we're going to start whipping our egg whites. So here are your tips to have foolproof meringues every time. Your meringue recipe is always going to be double sugar to egg whites. Always. So it's an easy one to remember. Your egg whites have them always at room temperature. Take them out for an hour, two hours before you're going to use them. Another tip is don't let any yolks into your egg whites. The yolk will actually stop your egg whites from whipping and you may as well just throw it out. Make sure all your utensils are nice and clean. Make sure there's no grease on your beater or in your bowl because it will actually stop your egg whites beating as well. People sometimes go wrong with meringue because they don't know what it's supposed to look like at certain stages. So we're going to start the machine on low and build lovely stabilizing bubbles and then when you see bubbles form we're going to turn it up high and we're going to beat it on its own until it forms stiff peaks. Slowly start to add in your warm sugar bit by bit. You will see the meringue become thicker and have a glossy sheen to it. Keep going, you are on the right track. Once all your sugar is added in, turn off the machine and what you should be left with is a nice shiny meringue with nice stiff peaks. You can tell if it's done. If you put a little bit on your fingers, smush it, you can't feel any sugar granules, it's a good meringue. Another good way to check if your meringue is done is oh, it doesn't fall out over your head. It's good, it's stiff, it's stabilized. If your meringue doesn't look like this at this stage, let me know in the comments below, maybe I can help you out, but hopefully you look just like this. To bake your meringues, line your trays with parchment paper, not greaseproof paper or anything else. Parchment paper is the only thing that's gonna come off. This is my favorite part of the dish because adding the raspberry comes out beautifully. Dot around the raspberry puree on the surface of the meringue. With a large spoon, lightly fold in the puree to create a beautiful raspberry ripple effect. Do you see that? Gorgeous. Gently scoop the meringue without mixing the lovely ripples you created and then just spoon it onto your tray. Nice big meringue. Let it fall free form. I think they're nicer when they're free form. They look so beautiful like little raspberry clouds. These gorgeous meringues are ready for the oven. Now despite popular belief, meringues do not take like 16 hours to cook. They only take two. So before you know it, we're going to be eating them. It's been two hours. Now we turned off the oven, let the meringues go totally cold, let them set. And now we're going to check on them. These look amazing. I'm glad that the pink is still a nice rich color. They're going to be nice and chewy in the middle. I can't wait. To serve, generously pipe on whipped cream to your meringue. Scatter over some toasted pistachios and sandwich it together with another meringue on top. And there you have it, a beautiful dessert fit for a king, or a queen in my case. To mix it up, you can add a variety of different flavors. I also did cocoa, but the possibilities are endless. I hope this recipe has taken the mystery out of meringue making. Please keep your lovely comments coming. I love reading them. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you back here again next Thursday for more Bigger Boulder Baking.